Okay, in the last two videos I have showed you guys all the parts we needed for this PC build, which is going to be a video editing workstation and a mid to high end gaming PC as well. I've done unbox for each of them and I've also told you the reason why I choose those components and also the price of it, which in total is about 1600 US dollars before any taxes. In this video, I will show you how to put everything here together and build up this PC. All right. As everything being said, let's begin. First, we want to put the motherboard on a flat surface so we can work on it, and you can just use the motherboard box to do this as well. And then we're just gonna put the RAM onto the motherboard RAM slot, and this is very easy to do. In this case, we are only going to use two of the RAM slots. And because our RAM is dual channel RAM, so I'm going to install RAM on the slot which is next to each other, or aka there will be an empty slot between those two RAMs. If you get what I mean. <laughs> okay, so just unclick or pull back the lock mechanism or the tab, whatever you call it. Check the position of the notch on the RAM stick. Make sure it fits into the slot in the right way. Then just gently and firmly press the RAM on both sides until you heard click sound. If the RAM is locked in place, then you are good. And then just do the same on the other RAM sticks. Okay, before we put the CPU into the CPU socket on the motherboard, I'm just gonna remove the plastic film on the motherboard heat shield so it looks nice and clean. Anyway, move on, take out the CPU, and on this motherboard, we're just gonna have to pull up the CPU socket lever, and then make sure the arrow dot on the corner of the CPU itself and on the CPU socket is lined up correctly, uh, which means they are facing the same way. So this time, you don't need to push it in, uh, just gently place the CPU onto the CPU socket, and then the CPU should drop into the sockets freely, and just give it a little wiggle to make sure it isn't moving, and then you should be good. And after that, we're just gonna lower the lever to lock up the CPU in place. We're going to remove the two plastic brackets on each side of the CPU so we can install our CPU water cooler afterwards. These screws are for us to mount the liquid cooler pump. Uh, you can find them in the box and take them out and mount it onto the motherboard. Next, we can install our NVMe M.2 SSD. Again, the one I'm using here is the one terabyte Adida XPG SX8200 Pro. Locate M.2 slot on the motherboard. In this case, they are under two metal heat shields, which one of them says the name of this motherboard. Of course, it's the X570 Pro Wi-Fi. Uh, unscrew and remove the black heat shield. Because our M.2 SSD here is a 80 millimeter model, we will need to take out a thread mounting post and screw it on the motherboard right on the 80 sign there. Once that's done, you can push the M.2 SSD into the slot, then hold down the other end of the SSD to where the mounting post is. Use the tiny screw that come together with the mounting post to tighten up and secure the drive. And make sure this finger tight screw is fine. So once the M.2 drive is installed in place, remove the blue plastic film on the back of the heat shield. Then we can put back the heat shield over the M.2 drive. Put the screw back, lock it in place. Okay, so after that, we can start to put the motherboard into the case now. And before I do that, I'm just gonna mount a fan sound to the liquid cooler's radiator first. You can do this after mount the motherboard in, or you can do it now, it does not matter. I just choose to do it now. And then uh, connect the fan cable directly to the pins that are on the radiator, so you don't need to reroute the wires after you install AIO. Let's just put the motherboard into the case. So first of all, we need to find those tiny little golden mounting posts inside the accessory box that come with the case and there are nine holes on the motherboard and because there is one mounting post is already in the case so we only need to mount another eight of them so three of them on each end and two of them in the middle after you do that it just fit the motherboard correctly on the stand up mounting posts and just make sure the IO ports are in the right position as well and then just put the motherboard screws in again finger tie this is good enough or maybe just a little bit more than that but anyway now, since the motherboard is in, so we can start to put the cooling fans inside the case. I've already removed the original two fans that come within the case, which is the black one. And now I'm just going to install these three factory design RGB fans. These are all 120 millimeter fans. The good thing about these fans is uh, those fans don't need extra hub like the Corsair ones. So we can just connect the fans directly to the motherboard and sync the color by using the Gigabyte RGB Fusion software. I'm going to put two fans at the front of the case and one at the back of the case. So it makes it a direct airflow. After that, we're just going to put the AIO, which is the liquid cooler into the case, uh, remove the top mesh on the case so you can mount the radiator 
and just use the screw that come with it and then screws in. Use a cross type pattern to screw those screws on each side to make sure it's evenly tightened. After that, I'm just gonna put the CPU cooler and mount the pump onto the CPU. Uh, in this case, it already has the thermal compound pre-applied on the pump, so we don't need you to apply extra compound on the CPU. Just put the pump onto the CPU and fit the bracket into the mounting post, then tighten them up all using in cross patterns. And just make sure all four corners are evenly tightened and it is not moving. It's good for you to start connect all the cables to the motherboard now, such as from I.O. cables and all the fan cables as well. This should be easy to do as well. The connecting pin on the motherboard will have name beside it to tell you what it is for. Just connect the front and back fans to the system fan header and the pump to the CPU fan header. The I.O. for the USB 3, which is the blue connector, and the power button and status LED, or those tiny small little connectors are ghosts on the bottom of the motherboard. There is a kit come with in the motherboard box, like a plastic bracket thing. Uh, will help you to throw out those little connectors and connect them to the pin headers on the motherboard. Next, I'm going to install the SATA SSDs. There is a back plate for us to mount up to three SSDs there. Mount SSDs with the port facing downwards, then screw the plate back in place. Now, I'm going to install the power supply unit. Before we slide the power supply unit into the bottom of the case, we need to plug in all the cables that we need to the power supply unit first. In this case, we'll need one SATA power cable for the SSD. Uh, if you have more than three hard drive or SSD, uh, you will need extra cable for that and one PCIe power cable for the graphic cards and the CPU power cable as well as the motherboard power cable those are the cables that we need for this build there are labels on each cable so you will know which one is for which purpose so after we've done that then we can slide the power supply unit into the bottom chassis of that case and screw the plate back in to secure the power supply unit and then route the SATA cables for the SSD and connect it to the motherboard. The SATA port on the motherboard is on the lower right side of the motherboard. There are six of them. And then next, we can just install the graphic cards in there. Uh, just bite on screw and take out two PCIe slot covers on the case. Pull back the PCIe slot tabs and make sure the notch on the graphic card is matched to the, you know, the notch on the PCIe slot. And then just like the way we put in our RAM before, push the graphic cards into the slot until you hear the click sound. And make sure the graphic cards is secure in the slot and then put two screws that was on the PCIe slot cover to further secure the graphic cards. And okay, so now we have just finished installing every single components that we need for this PC. So the next thing is to finish up connecting all the cables to the right connectors. And uh, yeah, make sure you connect the PCIe power cable to the graphic card as well. And depends on what kind of graphic card that you are using, it's either gonna be six pin or combining six plus two pins to eight pins. Before you want to tighten up and manage all your cables behind, it's better for you to turn on and run tests for this PC. You can just go into the BIOS settings and to see if every components are recognizing there. If not, uh, you can still have chance to fix and reconnect the wires easily. And if everything works out well, now you can properly route all the cables and to the back of your case and tighten up together, uh, do a nice and clean cable management there. I recommend to use Volco ties and zip ties to tighten up the cables. Like I mentioned this before, in this case, it leaves a pretty good space at the back of this case for, for you to manage all those cables. So this is, should be a fairly easy job to do on this case and now in case if you're interested this is how I end up manage my cables on this PC here I consider that's a pretty good job for me <laughs> all right so this is how we build up this PC here and the rest of it is just to you know install the operating system and the drives or you may want to update the BIOS but for that you just need to download the latest BIOS to a USB drive and enter the BIOS settings follow the BIOS update steps to update the BIOS that's same for the system drives as well such as Wi-Fi your graphic cards your chipset, your audio, uh, and so on. So most of them, once you've installed Windows 10 system, it will automatically download and install it for you at the background. But in this case, you need to download and install the Wi-Fi card drives separately for this one. So you just go to the Gigabyte website to download and install it. Uh, it's also recommend for you to install the latest drive for your graphic cards, even though once you install the Windows operating system, the system will automatically install the graphic card drives for you, but a lot of chance that it's not the latest one. For me, in this case, I using the NVIDIA RTX 2060 so I just go to the NVIDIA website download the uh, NVIDIA experience center and from that I can update the drive to the newest uh, graphic card driver and for change and sync the RGB lights 
uh, on the cooling fans and the RAM just to download and install Gigabyte Fusion software on their website. You can just change the setting there. All right, so everything is done here. Uh, we have a functional good looking PC for our video editing and gaming is all here. And if you are watching this video now means I'm already using this PC here to edit this video. And in the next video, I will be running benchmark on this PC here to test out the performance of this PC. If you're interested to know, please stay tuned for next video. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.